Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my workshop. A lot of people have been asking me to do a workshop tour for quite some time, but I've been kind of lazy and always have other projects going on. However, I am knee deep in the middle of the next Copperhead build for the 2021 World Championship of BattleBots coming up in Vegas in August. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you what my shop looks like when I'm in the middle of a build, because as you can see, is absolutely trash. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So you can actually see how I use the shop rather than how it looks when it's all like perfect and tidy, which really isn't that interesting. So uh, let's get started and look at the workshop and what's going on. So before we get too far into this video, I'm probably going to warn you this video is going to be very, very long because there's a lot of stuff to talk about and I don't really have this very well structured. So I'm just going to kind of walk around, point the camera at myself and just ramble about a few things. Uh, the shop itself is just a three car garage. You can kind of see one garage door sort of over there and another one over there. Um, I think it's about 850 square feet overall and I'm on the house edge over here. This is the door to go into the mud room, the laundry room, and then into the rest of the house. This is kind of where the shop started. This is kind of where I started building stuff. And the further we go that way, the less organized and just kind of weird it gets. Um, but this is the pegboard. Um, you might remember this from like early videos. This is kind of where I would shoot against. Um, I don't really have a workbench in place of that now, but this is what this wall is. This is just kind of common tools, things that I use a lot. That's what pegboards are. This is charging, small parts, storage, and also fasteners. So in here, I can pull this out and I've got pretty much all the batteries that I'd ever want. I got coin cells, um, double A's, triple A's, nine volts, everything like that. And then this is kind of my battery charging setup. I've got my batteries for my camera equipment, um, all my Bosch tools, both the um, 24 volts and the 12 volts. And then over here is where all my fasteners and other kind of parts start. Um, I've got one of these um, little thread checkers. You've seen this in the holiday gift guide. And then over here is all fasteners. These are um, Durham manufacturing and they're you know kind of the stuff that you see at the hardware store. We can kind of pick these up and take them with you. These are all full and they have all sorts of various things in them. Um, this one is all electrical connectors. I've got butt connectors, spade connectors, ring terminals, a um, bunch of those Wego snap lock connectors. So this is kind of where I keep all of my major parts. And then these two over here are 100% hardware. So I got number four, six, eight, quarter inch, 10, all that good stuff. Um, they're all organized inside of here. So this is kind of where a lot of projects start with, you know, parts and hardware. So we're still on that same wall. You can see um, right over here, I have all the hardware bins. I've got one of these uh, large uh, cabinet things. This is always a bit of a mess. This is, um, I don't know, wood finishes, paints, some spare parts, basically anything that is too cluttery that I just kind of want to throw in here um, gets put in here. I have a lot of kind of hardware over here, but kind of more like homeowner stuff, you know, stuff that you do around the house, um, solvents, things like that. But because you can close the doors, it can hide a lot of stuff. And then over here is uh, large part storage. So I have a lot of bigger stuff in here. Um, a couple of the bins down there are crippling depression and all the spares for that. Um, a couple of these are just motors. So I just have a big old bin of motors. I think it's this one because it's really heavy. I have enclosures in here, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, a lot of my lighting equipment is in here. Um, this is just large stuff that I need to store in bins. I don't really need to access a whole lot. So that is pretty much this whole side of the shop. And then we'll kind of get into the middle section, which is the super island, which has everything in it. This little space right here in front of me, I'm not going to talk too much about, but this is kind of the dead space. This is all staging. Um, right now in the corner, you might have seen it in the very beginning, um, I have a bunch of doors from an internal remodel that we were doing. This area just kind of gets a little bit cluttered. If anything comes into the shop, it usually comes into the shop right here, and this is kind of staging before it goes elsewhere. So. Yeah, um, let's move on to the far wall over there, and that is Laser Row. So let's take, go take a look at that. 
So here I am over by my laser cutters. I've got the Ortur and then I've got my um, big 60 watt CO2 laser. Um, right there is the door to go inside and right there is the hardware and fastener. So we were just like right over there. Um, we're kind of opposite to that right now. I'm kind of doing this in a perimeter type of thing. So I'm kind of going along the walls and then we're gonna come into the center. I have this massive uh, workbench uh, island thing in the middle. So we'll talk about that last, but I'm just kind of going around the perimeter. So this is where I do all my laser cutting. If you watch my channel religiously, you probably remember um, doing the build of this laser cutter stand. It's just kind of a rockler stand, um, but this is, one of my most used tools. I haven't used it in quite a bit, but this is what I use to, you know, cut all templates. Um, just, you know, masking for painting. There's a lot of little uses that I've found having a laser on hand. And this has to be close to the outside door, which is right there um, for exhaust. I don't really have a permanent fixed exhaust set up for this yet, um, but I have it right next to the door for that reason. And then over here, I have the um, smaller little diode laser, which I don't really use all that much, but I did just get this pretty recently. So that's kind of what's along this row. Um, if you look very closely, yes, you can see that down here, we actually have the new top panels for copperhead drying. Um, this is the new version for this year. They just need a little bit of clear coat and also a little bit of re-rusting. So there you go. That is the new top panels for Copperhead. These are all um, AR500. We got those down there. And this whole thing is usually just kind of used for staging or whatever projects I'm kind of currently working on at the time. It does have a vise and my Arbor Press on it. Really not a great place for either of those, but that's just kind of where they live. And I'm just gonna kind of slide the camera down here so we can talk about the bench grinder and everything else. So yeah, let me move the camera. So the laser is down there, and then I've got a bench grinder next to that. Um, I've got this guy, which I really like using. This is um, a Jet, I think it's a 48 by 20, 24 inch um, disc. I forgot how big this thing is, and all of my tape measures are just gone. Um, but this thing's really cool, I really like this. You can really feed some metal into it. Um, this is relatively new. And of course I have the Nova drill press right here on the workbench kind of in front of me that you can't see this is kind of the most uh, useful spot in the shop this is kind of where the computer is and this is kind of where i'm doing a lot of things so having the drill press pretty close to that is nice my drill bits are all the way on the other corner of the shop which i maybe have to kind of figure out but i don't really have one set of drill bits i kind of have like i don't know nine or something like that so i usually just kind of end up using the tray and just kind of shoving what i need up there but as you can see i mean this is Messy, I have been drilling a lot lately. Um, but yeah, the drill press sits right next to the bandsaw over here. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see the bandsaw. Um, so the bandsaw is over here and this whole thing is on caster so I can kind of move it out and move it to where I need to. Uh, but this is kind of those last finishing steps. You know, I have a um, countersink in here just for deburring. So this is for deburring. So I kind of cut, move over to the mill or the other mill over there, the CNC router. And then this is all just kind of finishing. I'm doing a lot of work right here on this workbench. So having these tools nearby is kind of handy. Uh, so let's go over into this corner, which is really, really messy right now. Um, this is kind of the table saw and woodworking area. So here is the woodworking area. Um, I've got a rigid R4512 table saw and I have the extension built into it with a Bosch uh, router table and Bosch router. Uh, this is kind of tucked a little bit more into the corner than it usually is just because I'm trying to use the space. Right down there are actually um, both of the pieces of copperhead. So they're kind of sitting on the ground. Um, so it's kind of taking up that room. So these are kind of shoved a little bit unnaturally into the wall. Uh, this whole corner has the dust collector, of course. This is an Oneida 3 horsepower V3000. It um, has a full HEPA filter, which is um, this guy, a big old drum. I think it's like a 35 gallon drum, which is nearly full. And then it goes up along the wall over to the CNC router, which is over there, which we'll go to next. And then eventually I want to run all the way across this shop and over to the wall where the drill press and the sander is. I just haven't done that yet because running this stuff is really annoying and fiddly. Um, also back here, I have 
This used to be my primary material storage, but I have something else over in that corner, which we'll get to later. Um, but this is kind of big sheet storage. I have one of these um, big styrofoam sheets for ripping down boards. You can just lay it down, throw a piece of plywood on top of it, use your circular saw, nice and handy. Um, but this is just kind of any overflow. It's kind of more metal than anything right now. I have a lot of metal pieces in here and really tall stuff that doesn't fit over there. Uh, but this is primarily where I do um, all my woodworking stuff or use my table saw. And I do have the table saw hooked up to dust collection. I've got a couple ports over here. Uh, one that goes down to the table saw, which also can extend pretty much out through this whole area with a little nozzle on the end. And then I have a sweep over here, but unfortunately this area tends to collect a lot of things. So there's a ladder here, there's copperhead boxes and all sorts of stuff. So it's really not a great area to sweep. I should move the sweep to somewhere else. Uh, but this thing has been fantastic. It's really pretty necessary with the CNC router. And eventually I might want to get an actual, you know, saw stop or something like that and have a permanent table saw right here. But I just end up needing this room too often for staging things. So uh, let's slide over there and look at the router. So we finally made our way to the other end of the shop. If I look straight that way, I'm looking at the pegboard and all of the storage over there. And now we're in the opposite corner where the Avid CNC router is. This is a four foot by four foot router and it fits yeah, pretty nicely here in the corner. In addition to the router, I also have my material storage cart over here. So it's going to hit something in there. So this is where I have all of my wood and I do have some aluminum. I've got a bunch of extrusions up here on top and then all my sheet goods on the back side. So this is kind of nice because it fills in this kind of weird area back here that nothing else really fits into and I still have access to get into the CNC like that. Um, over here is a, I think this is a 56 inch. Here's one of my tape measures. Yeah. So it's a um, 56 inch Harbor Freight tool chest. This is where a lot of the tooling for the CNC router lives. I've got the drawer, um, of course, which has most of the major used stuff. I've got most of the main bits in here, things like that. Um, but over here I have all sorts of other stuff. I haven't fully filled this up yet, but it's nice to have another workbench right here so I can kind of stage things over here, take them off the mill, measure them, things like that. Right now it is extremely cluttered because, well, I'm just in the middle of this crazy build. Um, I'll maybe get another shot of this, but I have the speed controllers for Copperhead with the um, potting compound drying on this right now. Just, I needed some sort of workbench and this was the only thing that was free. So yeah, that's what this corner is kind of all about. This is actually the only functioning garage door that I have in this shop. That one does function, but there's almost always stuff kind of lined up against it. So this is kind of where everything comes in and out of the shop, which is less than ideal because I have this uh, fatigue mat down here. So this always kind of has to be moved. There's usually a fair amount of chips and dust and things like that, but it does prevent me from buying a lot of new tools because I know it's going to be a little bit of a hassle to get through that small opening. So yeah, maybe there's something to it. So here is the back side of that tool chest. So right over there is the CNC router. And on the back side of this, I have my 20 ton hydraulic press. This is just a Harbor Freight 20 ton hydraulic press, like I just said. Um, when I first got this, I really didn't use it that often. I think it sat here for six months before I really used it. And then now I'm using it all the time. Having a hydraulic press is really nice. Um, we were just recently, pressing out the old motor shafts and you need something like that to do it. So this just kind of doesn't really have a good home. It just kind of sits back here since this is kind of a little bit of dead and unused space. Um, just kind of a strange spot. Back here, I also have another tool chest. This is kind of overflow stuff. This is, um, I have a lot of electrical stuff for, you know, house electrical. Um, I've got some plumbing, you know, all those things I don't really use on a daily basis, but all of that just kind of lives inside that chest. And then over here, yes, you can see, this is my small assortment of clamps. And normally right here, I have my um, hand truck and a couple other little, you know, shop tools that just kind of sit in this gap. Um, got some sawhorses up there, um, but this wall is just kind of used to store stuff. It's kind of really out of the way. 
and this place is usually where I store my camera stand, which is what I'm using to film, but when it's kind of not in use, it just kind of goes somewhere back in here. So this is just kind of dead space. And let's see what else. So yeah, I've got my welding table up there, and then this is that first garage door where I just kind of shove stuff that I'm not currently using. So this whole area back here could be better utilized, but right now I'm just kind of using it for, you know, temporary throw stuff because I don't know where else to go. Um, so let's look at the machining area and then we'll go to the workbench. So here we are over by the lathe. This is a um, Harbor Freight or Central Machiner. I think it's a nine by 20 lathe. It's fine. It's really old. I got it for maybe only a couple hundred bucks um, several years ago, and it's been my primary lathe up until, well, it is my primary lathe, and it's fine. It's a little sloppy. It's not very powerful. Um, one of these days I'm going to get a real lathe, but this does what I need it to. It's just not very concentric or anything like that, but it's totally fine. Uh, this sits on top of a 44 inch Harbor Freight tool cabinet. This is where a lot of my hand tools are, anything that's not on the pegboard or not anything that's on the island. Um, so kind of lesser used tools. Um, you know, I have all my like RPM sensor, infrared temperature gun, weird stuff like that. So that's kind of where all of these tools live. Right here in front of me is kind of the assembly workbench. And I'm gonna do the island kind of in four parts. I have kind of four discrete island, parts of the islands. And this is kind of where all the assembly and setup kind of goes. So that's why all the hand tools are right there. It's one of the few things in the shop that is actually well thought out. Um, over here is the Tormach. This is a Tormach PCNC 440. It is the smallest um, mill that they make. And it has served me well over the years. Um, I probably need to get something a little bit bigger. I'm always running into the limits of this thing, but it serves me pretty okay. Um, on the other side of it, I have a Harbor Freight US General um, side cabinet, which is meant to go kind of on the side of these, but I have ones on casters, and that is kind of the um, little tool uh, bench thing that goes with the mill. So this is where kind of like a lot of drill bits, a lot of center punches, all of those things associated with the mill kind of sit in there. The monitor is mounted to it, and that's where the keyboard and everything sits. So this area is kind of where I do all of the machining, and on the other side of the island is kind of um, finishing or more manual processes, you know, less of the CNC stuff. So that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, let's see where to go next. I guess we'll just um, start talking about the island. Uh, so let's start with um, the side over there. So welcome to the island. Uh, this is kind of a unique aspect of my shop, I guess. I haven't seen many people doing something like this. The central island sits in the middle of the two-car side of the garage, I guess, and it is four seven-foot by three-foot workbenches with this kind of half wall in the middle of them. Um, this is the first one. We'll kind of start talking about this, but this whole island is about 13 and a half feet long and a little over six feet deep. So it's somewhere around 80 square feet total. And it is, as you can see, a lot of workbench space. This is my kind of primary workbench. This is kind of generally where I'm always sitting when I'm working on something. Um, it's where I have my computer monitor and this monitor can actually go to either side, which is kind of nice. Um, so I can see it over at the mill. I can see it over here pretty much anywhere. This is where I have all my tapes and just kind of, you know, assembly type things. And normally this is almost always cleared off. This is usually pretty clear because I like to, you know, have this for working on various things. But this is where the trash can is. This is where kind of, you know, my calculator and all that good stuff is. This is kind of my home base. All the other workbenches are just kind of auxiliary to that. And um, yeah, it's tough to see on camera, but right over here is the sander bench grinder, drill press, so kind of give you an idea of where we're at with things. Uh, let's see, a couple little noticeable, noticeable, notable features. So I do have this half wall, which I'm kind of starting to like. It was kind of one of those weird ideas, but I do actually kind of like it. Um, I have this built-in power supply that sits right here. So uh, this thing has a 
bigger power supply down below, but this I can do up to 60 volts and up to about 15 amps worth of current, which is quite good. And I have all the leads right there. So this is generally where I kind of connect everything and you know mess with it for the first time. The computer sits right here underneath. It is mounted underneath this workbench. Um, I have an, not an ethernet drop, but I have an Eero, which is kind of a mesh network thingy. I have that sitting right here. So I have ethernet in this whole workbench. The ethernet actually goes over to the laser and anything else that needs it. But this is actually kind of the hub where a lot of electricity goes to. Every single one of these workbenches is powered up with power. You have outlets all along the outside. This whole thing then can provide power. That's why we have you know, a power supply and some other things down here. So that's kind of nice. And the computer runs off of that as well. In addition, behind the computer, um, I have every USB kind of cable that you could want. This is a mini, I have a micro, and they just kind of tuck back in there. I have a little loop that is attached to the back of the workbench. So if I need a USB-A, I can pull that out. I've got a USB-A and I can feed it back in there. I also have a 12 volt barrel jack right here that I can pull out if I need power in addition to that thing. So yeah, this is kind of the primary workbench where I do most things. Let's slide on down to the electronics workbench where I kind of do most electronic stuff. And here is the electronics workbench. Um, it's pretty much the exact same as the other one, but this is where I have uh, my soldering irons. I've got a Metcal, um, I have a hot air station, and I've got a Hako, and just some other little stuff along here. So this is generally where I do soldering and things like that. It is very close to the computer, so if I need to solder something and then program it, it is just kind of right next door. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot going on right here. Um, we are doing battle hardening of the motors, which requires, you know, basically filling the whole thing with epoxy. And so that's kind of what's going on right now. All of these are drying and I have all of the crap laid out for that. So this is kind of one of those uh, workbenches where it's usually open enough. I have soldering irons inside here. I have um, wire cutters, um, heat shrink, things like that. So this is kind of where the final assembly for electronics happens. And catty corner to that is actually where final assembly for mechanical stuff happens. So kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, this one is much more suited for electronics assembly. Like I said, I just kind of have all of that stuff here. So yeah, I don't know anything else to talk about. Um, the shelving system was all 3D printed. I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about it. It definitely gives like an extra layer of stuff that I can put on top, although it is just kind of, you know, connecting, uh, collecting some clutter right now. Still not really sure what to do with this because these really aren't the tools that should be here. But, you know, I think after the BattleBots build, I'll be able to figure out what exactly to do with this. But yeah, this is kind of the electronics workbench and it really is kind of overflow from the first one. So let's flip to the other side and we can see the machinist workbench and then the assembly workbench. So here we are at the opposite side of the workbench, and this is kind of where I do all the machining stuff. Uh, the Tormach is literally right here, the lathe is right over there. So to literally take something out of the Tormach and set it here, that's what this is for. Um, I've got my granite surface plates, I've got all my taps, all my tooling is inside here, and then these are filled up with um, you know various things. Those are all collets. This is where all my drill bits are. Um, over here I've got a uh, countersink set, all my files, layout tools, measuring tools, things like that. So this is kind of where all that goes. And because of these things on the workbench, this is actually one of the smaller ones, but this is just kind of staging for machined parts or things that need to be machined or modified or something else. Um, I've got, uh, if you watch my channel, these are the shafts, the two-part shafts that I machined um, just a little bit ago, maybe a weekend or two ago. I don't know, time is meaningless anymore. Um, that's what these are. You can see all the chips from tapping all of the various components. I've got a broken Heimer tip um, sitting there. This all needs to kind of get cleaned up, but that's really what this workbench is for. It is really just staging for the CNC machine, and this is where all my tools are, so this is where I do all the measuring. And this is the assembly bench. There's really nothing all that special about this bench, but it kind of has the assembly tools. Inside this drawer, I have all my Allen wrenches. Um, I've got my T-handle Allen wrenches up here, 
and then I have all of my handheld power tools back there. So if you're gonna kind of put something together, this is the workbench that I use. It also has the most room underneath of it. Almost all of the other workbenches have some sort of cabinet or something underneath, so you can only have one place to sit. This one is completely open, other than this box that really shouldn't be there. Um, so this one, you just kind of have the most space to, I don't know, take one of the frames of Copperhead, drop it down, and just kind of start working on it. So that is what this is for. And as you can see, um, this is what we're doing right now. I've got all of the um, Copperhead drive components up here. We're testing out the different drive configurations and this is what all of these pieces are just looking across this and just how did it get this bad um, so yeah this is kind of the final assembly stuff and i have it next to the mill next to the lathe so if something you know kind of doesn't quite fit right um, i've got my files right here i can file it down if it needs you know something turned on the lathe i can throw it on the lathe throw it on the mill and this is just kind of my favorite part of the shop because usually when something is done being built at this station, it is done and it is ready to you know, ship off to a competition and get destroyed or something like that. So yeah, this is the final section of the island. I think overall, I really do like the island concept. Um, I know some people that do woodworking might be a little bit weirded out that you don't have this big open space um, because of the wall and the gap in between everything, I can't take like a four by eight sheet of plywood and set it down but I rarely do that. Um, it's usually heavier and you know, this is about as big as I get. So I don't really need the large size. If I do need something like that, I'll put the um, saw down on my table saw. I can take the um, fence off and take the router table fence off, lower the router, lower the, saw, lower the saw, and I can use that. Or I can use the CNC machine, the CNC router over there. So either of those in the rare instances where I need to put a large board on top of something, I'll use those spaces. So yeah, that is the island. So for this final shot, I thought I would switch places with the opening shot on this video. I was standing right over there where the camera is and the camera is over here. So we just kind of swapped places. So you can kind of get a better view of this area of the shop. Um, this once again is just kind of where I do staging and just kind of set stuff that doesn't really have any other spot. Um, as you can see, we've got um, the, let's see, is this the second? Yeah, this is the second copper head. The first one is actually right there. That's what it looks like when it's completely disassembled. So we're just kind of using this as, you know, putting copper head together, taking it apart, things like that. So that's what we're doing here. Um, I'm not really sure what else to talk about. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, this was kind of just an off the cuff video as I'm sure everyone at this point could probably tell. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea about what my shop is and what I've got in here. And I don't know, maybe you got some ideas on how to arrange your shop, probably not. But as always, thanks for watching. Um, we'll have more videos on Copperhead coming up for the 2021 season. And um, yeah, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.